on Happy Easter. So we're going to worship God this morning. Our risen King is alive and is alive forever. So take a comfortable position and sing along with us. The Lord bless you as you do. Amen.
not for him. He said, no guilt in life, no skin of man can ever fall us from his hands. He is our refuge, he is our present help in time of need. He is our heart, he is our finger, he is our longing, he is our shadow, he is our shadow, he is our shadow, he is our shadow. Begin to call him by his name. Begin to honor him by his name. Begin to appreciate him. He has been one that stepped in, the one that stood beside him. He has not allowed him to be a prey to the teeth of the enemy. The snail is broken up and snake has fed from the snail of the power. Begin to express your love for him. Begin to celebrate the gift of Peter. Say thank you, Jesus, for this time. Thank you because Jesus was born. Thank you because Jesus lived. Thank you because Jesus died. Thank you because He rose again. Thank you because He rose again. Lord, we celebrate the risen King. We celebrate the risen King. Lord, we give you all honor. Lord, we give you all our adoration. Lord, we just magnify Your holy name. Masha kata tasleyo, leko koto tasleyo. Masha kata valeke shleyo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because You have been faithful. Thank you because you have a purpose for us. Now that we send you, we all pray to you, we all honor, we all adoration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the glory of you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. And thank you for the celebration of Easter. Thank you for the raising king. Thank you for the hope of salvation. Thank you for your grace that speaks for us. That we said to you, behold the glory, to you, behold the honor, to you, behold the adoration. Be the highly lifted up and exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, as we continue this morning, let your prayers continue to come. Let your mighty hand be upon us for good. And daddy, we pray that you will grant us, O oh God, even your heart desire for this moment in the name of Jesus. Lord, we look up unto you after that we speak to us this morning, uh, that not of man but all of you, O oh Lord, that you will teach, you will instruct, you will lead and direct us, O oh Lord, and cause your name to be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will do much more. Lord, I keep myself behind the cross, and I say none of man but all of you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will do much more. To you be all the glory and honor, Lord, for in Jesus' name. We are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, people of God. Uh, you are welcome once again to this special Easter service. Uh, we bless the Lord because He is a good God. Uh, we thank the Lord because He is the risen King. No power of man, no scheme of life, no gift in life, no plot of man, no pandemic, nothing can take us away from Him. Romans is a what shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from his love. And we bless God that we have the opportunity to celebrate the risen king this morning. So I want your heart to be filled with the joy of Easter, to be filled with the joy of the risen king. Because he died and rose that we may live. So we give him praise and honor for that. And we welcome you to this second service. And we pray that the Lord himself will speak to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have been blessed this morning, so by just say amen once again and say, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you for the reason came. It is well with you. It is well with all that pertains to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, this morning, by the grace of God, I will be speaking on the topic titled, He is risen. He is risen. And I will read it from the book of Luke. He is risen. That's our title this morning. He is risen. And I will speak it from the book of Luke. Luke 24 from verse 1. Luke 24 from verse 1. <coughs> Luke 24 from verse 1. And I would like to read. It said, Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they are starting on that women then came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had to begin. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly and as it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that the old two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and about their faces to the dead, they said to them, When they said to them, Why do you see the living among the dead? 
He is not here, but he is risen. Hallelujah. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man will be delivered to the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remember his words. And and they remember his word, was like, then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. And there and their words seemed to them like I do tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb. And stooping down, he saw the linen, the linen cloth, lying by himself, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. May the Lord bless the winning of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so we're talking about the risen king. The risen king. He, he is risen. That's the title. And it's, 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 it's Easter. Is Easter. The story of Easter is the story of hope. It's the story of joy. In fact, it is the bedrock of our salvation. The story, if there will be no Easter, we would not be in faith. First Corinthians chapter 15, when you begin to read from verse 17, it said, If Christ has not died, and if Christ has not resurrected, he said that your faith will have been in vain. He said that Christ has not died and resurrected. He said those ones that have died in Christ will have been, will have perished, they will have died in vain. But when he said, and if in this world we have hope, we will be of all men most miserable. But when it got to verse 20, that's what Corinthians 15, he said, but indeed Christ died and resurrected, and he became the firstborn of the dead. So we know that Christ died and he rose again, and that is the basis of our faith. That is the reason for our existence. That is why we can say that because he lives, I can face tomorrow, and because he lives, life is worth a living. Because I know that he lived, he died so that I may live. I said he became poor so that I can be rich. You know, he took my place. Amen. And that is the story of Easter. You will remember on Tuesday uh, we we had the Holy Communion. That was the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. So on Tuesday, in, on, on the first day of Passover, the Passover is always celebrated for seven days. And on the first day of Passover, Jesus celebrated Passover. He took the last supper with his disciples. That was in Luke 22. By the time he got to Luke 23, Jesus was Jesus left the Passover table on Tuesday as we had it and went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Bible recorded that he had the tempter the tempt came. He that was a struggle. He was struggling whether to go to the cross or not to go to the cross. But God gave him victory and he was able to overcome the temptation of not going to the cross. And while he was still at Gethsemane, Bible said that Judas came with the army of the of, with the, with the army of Israelite and they arrested Jesus. Jesus was betrayed and they took him away and began to take him through series of trials. For they took him to the religious council, they decided to drink, they sat, they took him, they moved him to Pilate, who was the governor of Rome at that time, and then Pilate examined him, Pilate passed him on to Herod. Herod checked him out, Herod sent him back to Pilate. And then when he got back to Pilate, Pilate said, and finally, Pilate, Pilate Gave the people option. He said, Do you want uh, uh, Barabbas? Who is Barabbas? Who is a thief? Or you want Jesus? They said they prefer Barabbas to Jesus. And he gave them Barabbas. But said, What do I do with this man? They said, Crucify him. And they said, Crucify him. And Pilate delivered him to be crucified in the hand of the Israelites, in the hands of the Jews. And when he was delivered to be crucified, that was Good Friday. And Jesus was taken and he was on on the cross. And he died on the cross. The Bible says he went to the cross bearing our body. He went to the cross bearing our, he went to the cross bearing 
all our sin. And Isaiah chapter 53, no, verse from verse 4, beginning, he said, he, he, he said, he bore our griefs. He said, he carried, uh, he, he carried our, our, our sorrows. He bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. He went ahead, he said, he, he, he said for our transgression, he was crucified for our transgression. The Bible says he was bruised because our, because of our iniquity. He said the chastisement of our peace was upon it. And by his stripes we were healed. That was the story of Good Friday. Jesus died on our, on, on our behalf. That was when the perfect divine exchange was perfected. Divine exchange was perfected on Good Friday. The life of Jesus for our lives, our pain, our pain, our pain for His joy, our our, our nothingness for His everything, our iniquities for His forgiveness. He, he divinely He took our place. He replaced us. The judgment that was supposed to come to us, Jesus Himself took it on Him. The judgment that, that belongs to us, Jesus bore it on Himself. He carried our pain. That was the story of. Good Friday, and that was Luke chapter 23. And then there we read in Luke 24. Bible said it was the fourth day of the week, very early in the morning. That was the first day of the week. In 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 in, in Israel, the, during the Passover, when Jesus was crucified on the night of Passover. And the following day to the Passover was the Sabbath. No man is allowed to do any work on Sabbath. So the, 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 the women, the women that God was talking about in Luke 24, could not actually have gone to, to do environments for Jesus. So he, he died on Friday, was crucified on Passover, and then it was Sabbath, which was Saturday, and then the following day, which was the third day. Bible recorded in the first verse of where we read that very early in the morning that this woman they prepared spices and they began to go to the tomb of where Jesus died. And they said, let us go and burn him. And Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and other women, they gathered together, they took spices, and they began to go to the, to the tomb where Jesus was buried. But you will remember, in the account of Matthew, Bible said when, the, when Jesus died, the, the army, they went to, the, to, to, to Pilate and told him that you remember that he has promised that he would die and rise on the third day. Lest his disciples will go and steal his body and say he has risen. Give us guards. Give us guards to go and guard the tomb. Give us men that will, put, that will secure the body. And so guards, there, was a, that there were guards. They were guarding the tomb. And Bible says they rolled a big stone against the tomb. So you remember that story in the account of Matthew, that the tomb that Mary and the other women were going to was the tomb that was already sealed up. Guards were there, and there was a stone that was covered in. But this woman, Bible recorded in Luke 24, verse 1, that they woke up early in the morning. They were not thinking of the stones. They were not thinking of the army. They were going to the tomb of Jesus to embalm him. They were not thinking, how are we going to get there? The first thing I want you to know about the story of Easter, I'm excited about the story of, of, of Easter. The first thing you need to know about the story of Easter is the story of impossibilities becoming possible. It's the story of being limitless. It's the story of not allowing anything to hold you back. These women come together. They said, we know there is a stone. We know there is a limitation. We we know God are guarding it, but we don't know how we are going to get to the tomb. But nothing will stop us. We are going to get to that tomb. I have come this morning to let you know that the story of Easter is the story of possibility. That if you believe in the risen thing, that nothing is impossible. That let nothing hinder you. Let nothing stop you. Many of us are too fearful. Many of us are too afraid. And this thing are limiting us from reaching our goal. But Mary and the other women said, nothing will hinder us from getting to Jesus. 
they were not allowing the storms to be stopped there. They don't know how the storm will move away. They don't know how they will go past through the gap. But they said, we are going anyway. God is looking for people in this season that will say, it does not matter what is happening around me. I am moving forward. It does not matter the pandemic. I refuse to be down. I may be locked down, but I am not half. I may be restricted, but I am not limited. I may be shut in, but I am not shut out. I am developing. I am moving forward. There is no limitation. God is looking for people that we know, yes, there is a storm covering the tomb. God is looking for people, yes, yeah, there are guards standing that tomb. But I don't know how it is going to be, but I know there is a glory and nothing is stopping me from getting to my glory. I have come to bring good news to you this morning and to tell you that the story of Isa is the story of possibility. That nothing you set your mind to do that you cannot do if you believe it. Oh, there was a man that said, whatever the act can conceive and believe it can achieve. All you need to do is conceive it and if you believe in it, you can achieve it. Don't let the difficulty stop you. You remember the story of David. I am talking about David. That David went to give his brother supplies at work. And then he came here and he saw Goliath. And David was so was so cross in his spirit. He said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is defiling the army of the Lord? You know what happened? His elder brother came and said, David, what are you doing here? I know you. I know you try to do to bite more than what you can do for you. I know you try to do things more than what you can do. Just like people are telling you that that dream is too big for you. Just like people are telling you that that job is not your level. Just they are telling you and they have relegated you to a level and said that is where you can be. They have the said where they are looking for other people. Do you think you are part of that? David elder brother condemned him. David elder brother looked down on him. He said he cannot achieve what he has set his mind to achieve. But David said in 1 Samuel, he said, Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason why I am here? I am not in Qatar by mistake. I am not where I am by accident. God has ordered my steps to be here. And if I am here, I know there is a purpose for it. No man will stop me. No man will hinder me. Yes, I don't have the job yet. Yes, the woman has not come yet. Yes, the, the baby has not come. But I know they are coming because I serve the living God. Because my God knows no limitation. There may be a huge stone covering the tomb. How is May be guarding the tomb. I don't know how I am going to get to Jesus in that tomb, but I know He will make a way. I know when I step forward, He will make a way for me. Brethren, let no one despise you. Let no one limit you. Let no one put you down. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Only for those that we believe. If you will believe, if you will have faith, if you will have, uh, if you will have confidence in this reason, King, I tell you, nothing shall be impossible for you. This way we're not afraid. This way we're not careful about how we're going to get into the tomb. They said we are going to Jesus. We need to empower him. And whether there is a stone there or there is a carcass there, we will get through it. David said, There is a cause. There is a Goliath. That is my opportunity. There is a glory behind this story. I tell you, this present challenge, there is a glory behind it. If you will not allow this present challenge to stop you, many of us are giving up on so many things because of obstacles that will not come our way. I tell you, life is full of obstacles. There will be limitations, there will be contention. And that's what Jesus says, contend endlessly for your faith. So there will be challenges that will come. You know, but this way we are not looking at the challenges. They were focused on the purpose for which they were going for. And that is the first thing I want you to know about Christ, about, about Easter. The story of Easter is the story of possibility. The storms may be there, 
The gaps may be there. We care not how we are going to get there. But we know when we get there, the Lord will make a way for me. And so they kept moving forward. And the good thing about the scriptures, the good thing about trusting in God, is that when you begin to take steps forward, it begins to make a way for you. Because in verse 2 of that Luke 24, where we read, Bible said, and when they go to the tomb, they discover that the stone has been rolled away. <laughs> they go to the tomb. They have no idea how they were going to do it. But they kept moving forward anyway. And when they go to the tomb, the Bible says the stone has been rolled away. The God has gone away. In the account of Matthew, the Bible said there was a loud noise. The armies ran away, and the angel came and took away the stone. The truth of the matter is that most of the time, what we fear are not real. The thing that discourages us from taking the step we need to take. When we eventually take those steps, when we get there, we will discover that they are not there. There was a story of a woman that, that, that said she wrote a list before she got married. She wrote a list of her fears, a very long list. Will I ever get a man that will love me? Will I ever be married? Will I ever have children? Will my home be ever peaceful? Will I have a healthy life? When she was a young girl, she had this fear and she began to write all of them down. And the story went on to say, and then when she was getting married, she had settled down. One day she was going through a doctor and then she saw the list and she discovered none of those things that she had feared actually became a reality. Fear is false evidence appearing real. There is torment in fear. In fear. When you fear, there is torment. This woman got there and they discovered that their biggest fear that the stone would be there. That stone had been rolled away. It was not there anymore. And if you look at the scripture, everyone that have said it and die and die. Did they ever die? No, they didn't die. Everyone that have said, if I perish, I perish. Did they ever perish? No, they did not perish. Because there are people that have confronted their fears. They confronted their fear. They were not afraid. They said we were going. Scripture says that through that, that through the death of Jesus, he destroyed him that has the power of death, the devil. And then he stepped in and set free everyone that throughout their lifetime have been so Subject have been limited, have been under the bondage of fear. The story of Easter is the story of release from every bondage, including the bondage of fear. Many people are fearful about the pandemic. Many people are fearful about, 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 the, about the coronavirus. But Job said, What I have feared had come upon me. When you fear, you attract it. You send the, the, you send a, a message to it. You are operating in that same frequency with that issue with that thing that is going on. But what God wants us to do is not so fear. He said, fear not. For I will help you. Fear is not of God. God has released us from fear. As long as you keep moving forward and stepping forward, the Lord begins to make way. Look at the story of the three lepers. And I could say the three lepers were sitting at the gate of Samaria. They said, if we sit here, we will die. If we go to the camp of the enemy, we will die. So why do we sit there? Let us go to the camp of the enemy and go and die there. So if we sit here, we will die. Many of us are staying in the same place for the fear of failure. Many of us are staying in the same place for the fear of what people will say. For the story of Easter is the story of being fearless. Knowing that the storm is there, but going there, and when you get there, you will discover that the storm has been rolled away. Because when the three levels come here, what has happened? Bible said God has caused the army to hear in the sound of the mighty army, and they all fled 
living their goods. And this is the last day, they eat, they drink, they get some, and they go away. And they said, if we do not well, they could not share the good news. What they fear did not come to them. Ruth, I mean, uh, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Did she perish? No, she did not perish. The three Hebrew children said, Yeah, you okay, we will not bow. And we will not bow to you. Our God is able to save. Even if he will not save us, we will still not bow. Did they perish? No. He came in and stretched in and delivered it. As I've always told you, that the God we serve is Jehovah and on time. He is the one that steps in at the nick of time. And if you will trust him, and you will depend on him, you will see him stepping in for you and turning things around for you. Just keep moving. Let nothing stop you in your track. Let nothing take away your passion. Let nothing take away your dream. Let not the situation and circumstances not make you to become depressed and that because these will pass. And if you become depressed and lose hope, then you will not be a hope that will be victorious at the end of it all. Amen. Bible says this is where God to the two. And the two, the storm has been blown away. All the fear has not happened. And then they went in. And then they began to look for Jesus. Bible says they looked for Jesus. They looked at where he was buried. They couldn't find him there. They saw the great clothes. Mary Magdalene began to talk to Joanna. Joanna began to ask Mary Magdalene. Say, but this is where Jesus was buried. Yes, we are very sure it was in this home. In fact, look at the great clothes. These are the great clothes that were used to have him. But where is he? The Bible says they became powerless and they were worried. But as they were in that confusion in verse 3, the Bible says two angels appeared to them. And the two angels asked them a question that I would like to ask us this morning. The Bible says the angel asked them, He said, Why do you see the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living one among the dead ones? The other thing I want you to know about this story of Easter, of the story of Easter, is that many a times in our life we look at the wrong place for the wrong things. We look at the wrong place for the wrong thing. The women came to the tomb. They were looking for a living Jesus in the tomb. The tomb is meant for the dead. But they were looking for a dead Jesus in the tomb. That's the wrong place. And then they got him. They were looking for the dead Jesus. Not knowing that he is risen. Not knowing that he's alive. They were looking for the wrong thing. They were looking for a living among the dead. Many times in our lives, we look for uh, we look for the wrong thing. Uh, we look at the wrong place for the wrong things. Many a times we, we think in our heart, oh, if only I can just have money. If only I can just have a bigger house. If only I can just have a car. If only we thought the little one. If I only can talk the five thousand yeah. Then all my problems are over. Oh, if I can just have a nice place to live. Oh, if I can just have a good man to marry. All my issues will be headed. We are looking for peace where there is no peace. We are looking for satisfaction where there is no satisfaction. For the scripture says the life of a man consists not in the abundance of things he has. It is not in the amount of things that you have that you find joy. Many, many of us today are looking for a living Jesus in the tomb of death. We are looking for security. We are looking for assurance. We are looking for abundance where they do not exist. And my question to you this morning is where are you looking for comfort? Is where are you looking for joy? Is where are you looking for wisdom? 
as long as your home is not in Jesus, you are looking for the living among the dead. But this morning I have come to tell you that the only place where you find peace is Jesus. That the only place where you find rest is Jesus. That the only place where you find satisfaction is Jesus. No amount of money can replace it. No amount of clothing can replace it. No matter how big your car or your house is, it cannot replace it. It is only when your hope is in Him. It is only when your joy is in Him. That is where you can find the peace of mind. They were looking for Jesus among the dead. But He is risen. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and ever learning. And I will give you prayer. Come unto me. He said, Come and buy. Come and eat. Come and buy money and make without money. Why do you spend your money on things that not matter? Why do you look for peace where there is no peace? They were looking for the living among the dead. Where are you looking for your own peace? Where are you looking for your satisfaction? Where are you looking for your wisdom? Where are you looking for your, for your peace of mind? And then the scripture told them in verse 5. And then in verse 6, he told them the reason why they were looking for the living and not the dead. The reason why we look for the living and not the dead, why we put our hope in people and in material things and things around us, the reason why we depend on our connection for our promotion or our next step is because, number one, in that verse 6, the Bible says, the angel told them, why are you looking for the living and not the dead? He is not here, he is risen. He said, have you forgotten that he told you that he will be treated, he will fall into the heart of the enemy, that he will be crucified, but that on the third day he will rise again. And in verse 6, the Bible said, and they remember. The reason why we look for the living among the dead is because we forget his word. They forgot his word that he has promised them that he will die, but on the third day he will rise again. They forgot his promises concerning their life. The reason why we look for peace when there is no peace is because we forget the word of God. It's because we do not keep his word at mind. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. He said, Your word was found. I ate them. It became a joy and a rejoicing in my spirit. If you will not see the living and not the dead, then you need to read. Remember his word. You need to remember what he has spoken concerning you. Let's say in this story of any of Easter, I have come to ask you, what has the Lord told you about your life? What has he told you about your ministry? What has God told you about your children? What has God told you about your family? What has God told you about your wife? What has God told you about your future? I tell you, faithful is he that has coming. He only will be hold on unto his word and never forget him. Then we see him stepping in and turning things around for us. The reason why the women were looking for the living among the dead is because they forgot that he has promised that on the third day he will rise again. I have come to tell you this morning that it does not matter what you are passing through. It does not matter what your situation is. If only you will remember his word and hold on to it. You will see him stepping in and turning things around for your good. You may be the, you, you may be experiencing Good Friday but I tell you, according to his word, Easter Sunday is coming. He may be dead today, but on Easter Sunday he will rise today. There is no situation that is permanent. There is no issue that is lasting forever. If only you will hold on to his word and, and, and cling to him, you will see that he will move you from Good Friday to Easter Sunday because he has promised her. And the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of the sinner. 
He will die, he will be crucified. There will be a good Friday, but there must also be a, a, an Easter Sunday. The power that rose Jesus from death is still alive today, is acting and working upon you. If you will remember his word, you it will turn your good Friday to your Easter Sunday. So, no matter what you are going through, no matter your situation or circumstance, all you need to do is trust in Him and hold on to Him, and you will see Him working for you. Do you remember that for God is what? That was why they went looking for the living among the dead. Another reason why they, why they went looking for the living among the dead is because they were blind to His plan. They were blind to His plan. The plan of God was that without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sin. The plan of God was for it to be a divine substitution for Christ to die and for man to live. That was the plan of God. But they were blind to the, to the plan of God. And so they were looking for peace where there is no peace. They were looking for security where there is no security. They he said, he said, he said, the sorrow of those that follow other gods, their sorrow shall be multiplied. Many people have forgotten about God's plan and purpose for them. And they have been chasing about, they have been chasing after other gods. And that is why their sorrow was being multiplied. But if you know his plan, he said, I know the plan I have for you is the plan of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. There is an expected end that God is bringing you in. Into. But you must work within this plan and realize that he is working for your good. Christos says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, said, All things work together for good. All things, all situations. I tell you, this coronavirus situation as a circumstance, if you are a child of God, they are all working together for your good. You must know that God is aware of it. And you must know it's also part of God's plan and purpose in your life because He's aware of what is happening and know the plan. He has had in hand for you. There is an expected end for you. There may be increases and delay, but you must be confident because there is Easter. Because Good Friday turned to Easter Sunday, you must know that it will take you to that expected end. There is an expected end that is taking you that you must not lose sight of. He has a plan for you, plan of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. And the third reason why they were looking for the living among the dead was because they neglected the testimonies of others. They did not believe in the testimonies of others. The Bible said the, the women went back and tell the eleven apostles and the other people. But they said their story was like mere fable was like mere people. They did not believe what they are talking about. Said, what are you talking about? That is not possible. Oh, they told me somebody got a miracle job. He said, the Lord provided a job in a miraculous way for me. He said, no, forget it. He must have known somebody in that place. Things doesn't work like that in this place. They said, oh, the sister has been waiting for years. She now has a husband. They said, forget about it. They must make them. If it was already planned, go and do your own planning to get married as well. He said, oh, he got the promotion. Oh, it's because he's a yes man. That is why he got the promotion. When you despise the testimonies of others, you, 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 you prevent yourself from experiencing the same. Because in Revelation chapter 19, verse 18, it is said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So every time a person gives a testimony, it is a spirit of prophecy that is at operation at that time. And if you key it, in and do not think is a mere word of fable. Then you see God stepping in and performing what he, he has done in the life of that brother or sister in your own life. Because what he did for one, he can do for another. So they didn't believe their testimonies. And they were looking for Jesus where he was not there. Among the dead. And finally, in verses of where we read, Future says, the angels told them 
He said, He is risen. He is not here. He said, He is not here. He is risen. Two dimensions. The first one is that He is not here. God is saying in this period of Easter, I will disappoint the expectations of the wicked. They are looking for you among the failures. God said, I'm taking you from failure to success. They are looking for you among the non-entity. They are looking at the list of the people that were infected with coronavirus, seeking your name. They said the kind of job it does, it exposes you greatly. I am sure he has caught the virus. But God said, he is not there. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? <laughs> you are exempted from this pandemic. It cannot come near you. He said, I have speared you. They are looking for you in the place of failure, in the place of death. God said, he is not there. He is my child I'm taking him away. They are looking for your names among the single. If you will believe and hold on to his word, and remember his word that he has said, it is not good for man to be alone. They will come looking for you among the singles this year. But God will say, you are not here. I have taken her to the married group. They are looking for you among the jobless. They said it is coming to one end. He is coming to come to ask for money again because he doesn't have a job. But God said in the spirit of Easter, <laughs> you are looking for the living among the dead. He is no longer here. He is risen. He is no longer here. I declare in the name of Jesus that every expectation of man that is contrary to the purpose of God for your life in this season shall come to know in the name of Jesus. It will disappoint their expectations. It will frustrate their talkings. It will destroy their plan and take you to your place of purpose and destiny in the name of Jesus. When they come looking for where you were before, the answer will be, he is not here because God is moving you forward. He is taking you on eagle's wings and taking you to a mountain that is higher than you. God is moving you from the level you have now to the level he has proposed for you. And if you will believe it, and you will not look at the obstacle, nothing will hinder you from getting there. Because when they got there, and they were looking for the living among the dead, Bible said, he said, he is not here. Tell yourself, I am not here. I am not in place of sickness. I am not in the place of loneliness. My place is not in the grave. My place is not at the coronavirus isolation center. My place is not at the place of death. My place is not at the place of the single. My place is not the place of the jobless. My place is not in the hospital. I am not here because it is risen. And finally they say he is risen. He is risen. The grave is empty. That is the hope for eternal life. And because he is risen, we know we have eternal life. Because he is risen, I know that when I die before, even if I die before he comes, I know that at my head is not in the grave. I know that the power that rose Jesus from death is at work in my life to also raise me from the dead. I know there is hope of an eternal life. He said, I go and prepare a place for you so that where I have, you can also be. He said, I will prepare the place I will come back for you and take you so that where I have, you can also be. The story of Easter is the story of the risen king. It's the assurance of our salvation that because he is risen, death cannot hold us captive. Because he is risen, there is hope and life of a glorious future for us because he is risen. We have a place with him. That is the joy of our salvation. He is risen. And because he is risen, nothing can hold you down. Nothing can hinder you. Nothing can push you down. Nothing can take away your salvation if you will hold on unto him. And if you are here this morning, and you've not had 
an encounter with him. You are actually at that place. You are living in the place of the dead. You are still there. But it is a relationship with him that takes you from the place of the dead and brings you to the place of the living. So if you are listening to me this morning, I have not known this reason came. You have not experienced this joy of salvation. I encourage you by the, and I beseech you by the presence of God to come unto him now. Because whosoever come unto him, I will no wise cast away. So if you will come unto him, if you will forsake your sins, and accept him as your Lord and Savior, then you will see him stepping in and disappointing the expectations of the wicked. If you allow him room in your place, then you will see him walking in your favor. And when men say there is a casting down, you will see that for you there is a lifting up. Because he makes a distinction between those that serve him and those that do not serve him. So if you are here this morning, and you want to give your life to Jesus, and you can just bow down your head wherever you may be, and begin to say after me right now, and say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you this morning, I recognize myself as a sinner. Lord, I plead your blood upon me. I ask for your forgiveness. Purge me of my sins. Bless me of my righteousness. And make me your own in the name of Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you will become one again, and I say congratulations to you. And the Lord will keep and uphold you in the name of Jesus. But for the remaining ones of us, congratulations to you also, because you serve the present day. And remember, nothing can stop you. The stone will be there. The obstacle will be there. But let no man stop you. Look beyond the obstacle. Because behind it lies the glory. And if you keep taking the step and keep moving forward, you will discover that those things you fear, you fear, they actually do not exist. And you see God taking you over, then in the name of Jesus. And you do not need to look for, for you do not need to look for to seek for the living among the dead. All you need to do is believe his work. Believe his plan for you. And hold on to the testimonies of order. And because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because he is busy, nothing can hold you down. Just by our hands and just pray. I just begin to talk to God right now and say, Lord, you will keep me. That day by your word, I am not where. Lord, I am not where the enemy tells I have. Lord, every expedition of the wicked ones. Lord, begin to disappoint them. Lord, begin to disappoint them. Lord, the power that rose Jesus from the dead. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let it begin to walk upon my life right now. Begin to talk to God and say, whatsoever is called dead in my life, whatsoever is called dead in my home, let that resurrection power begin to operate upon them. And let them begin to move me from the place of death to the place of life. In the name of Jesus, let the resurrection power begin to quicken me. Let it quicken my mother body. My mother body. Let it quicken my vision. Let it quicken my passion. Let it quicken whatsoever is in my life that is dead in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, you are walking in my favor. And because he is risen, Lord, I rise above sickness. I rise above death. I rise above virus infection. I rise above, above every form of limitation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for what you have done, Lord. We pray by your mercy, O God, that the power of resurrection will begin to walk in every aspect of our lives. And by your mercy, you will take us to a place of destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you will do much more. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage us 
Uh, thanks for, for joining us uh, this morning. The Lord will bless and keep you in the name of Jesus. And we look forward to you joining us again on Tuesday, even for our thinking day. It's, it's, it's going to be on Zoom and to be interactive. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And as you go this day, the Lord will go with you. The Lord will keep you. His mighty hand will be upon you. You will not be a partaker of the pandemic. You are exempted by the blood. And His mighty hand will keep you safe in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share this again. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I say to your neighbor next to you, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. God bless you. See you on Tuesday. your neighbor surely, surely. definitely surely. without any doubt goodness mercy, mercy. favor Fable. kindness abundance shall follow you go ahead of you be all around you garment of heaviness they are up there garment of praise they come upon you and i declare concerning you that you will not backslide you will not go away you will not depart from god's presence from now on and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever Have a blessed and glorious week and see you on Tuesday. God bless you all in Jesus' name.